August 1487, Master Mariner Bartholomew Diaz set sail from Lisbon on a voyage that would change history. After rounding the bulge of Africa, Diaz had to fight the southerly winds that prevail along the West African coast. Sailing all the way past what is present-day Angola and Namibia, Diaz managed to reach further south than any previous European explorer. But at a point just south of the Orange River, Diaz grew tired of tacking against the stormy southerly winds. Leaving the coast, he sailed out into the open sea. Turbulent weather drove them dangerously further south for 13 days. Then a favorable wind enabled Diaz to steer eastward to make for land. But surprisingly, they could not find the coast. Without realizing it, Diaz had sailed around the southern tip of Africa. Diaz steered northward and finally saw land again. Then, on the 3rd of February, 1488, he found a protected cove where he was finally able to go to shore. This was an historic moment. It was the first time that any European had set foot on South African soil. It also marked the first encounter ever on South African soil between inhabitants of Europe and Africa. In this case, the Africans being the ancient Khoikhoi people. Diaz named the place where he landed Aguada da Saubas because of the fresh water spring they found there and because they arrived there on the festival day of St. Blaise. The spot where he landed is the exact site where the Bartolomeu Diaz Museum complex is situated today. Five hundred years after Diaz landed in Mossel Bay, his epic journey would be reenacted using a specially built replica of a caravel of the period. The caravel was built in Portugal and made from pine and oak. She was named the Bartolomeu Diaz and measured 23 and a half meters in length with a displacement of 130 tons. The Bartolomeu Diaz set sail from Lisbon on the 8th of November, 1987. The captain, Master Mariner Emilio de Souza, and his 16 crew members were mostly Portuguese or of Portuguese descent. The voyage included stops at Madeira and the island of St. Helena. Exactly five centuries after Diaz, the crew of the caravel named in his honor rowed ashore to a rousing welcome at Mossel Bay on the 3rd of February, 1988. The caravel, in her final resting place inside the Maritime Museum, is undoubtedly one of the most popular tourist attractions on the garden route. The granary 
which is a reconstruction of the original building of 1786, serves as the entrance to the museum complex. It contains a fresh Feinbos display and a photographic exhibition of mountain passes linking the coast to the Little Karoo. The granary leads out onto the museum grounds. The ethno-botanical garden contains plants that occur naturally in the Mossel Bay area. You can read about the fascinating variety of ways in which they have been put to use. Visitors can touch and smell the wonderful collection and the Braille Trail makes it accessible for sight-impaired people. The Maritime Museum, originally erected in 1901 to serve as a grain and sawmill, was adapted in 1987 to house as its centerpiece the life-size replica of the caravel in which Bartholomew Deer sailed into Mossel Bay in 1488. Caravels were a new sailing ship developed by the Portuguese in the 1400s. Their greatest feature was their lateen or triangular sails that made them more efficient at tacking into the wind. You can see the caravel and feel its unique and mysterious presence from any point in the three stories of galleries that encircle it. The museum houses informative displays on early Portuguese, Dutch and English maritime history. You can also see an interesting collection of maps and navigational instruments from the period. In the Maritime Museum foyer, there is a mural depicting the mythical figure of Adamasta, whom the gods sent to the southern tip of Africa to send out terrific storms to punish the Portuguese for daring to sail those southern waters. This beautiful urn was donated by the Portuguese government. It too features the mythical figure of Adamasta. Upstairs you will find an exhibit portraying the first recorded barter transaction on South African soil between the indigenous Khoikhoi people and Vasco da Gama. The Maritime Museum also houses exhibits from the former Cultural Museum. Among them are various artifacts as well as photographs of the early history of Mossel Bay and even older artifacts used by Mossel Bay's earliest inhabitants, the Khoikhoi and the Khoisan, whose forebears lived in this region for tens of thousands of years. One of the most popular attractions of the museum complex is the old post office tree, a large milkwood that is well over 500 years old. In 1501, Portuguese mariner Pedro de Tida left an important letter in a shoe under this tree. A few months later, another Portuguese mariner, Joao da Nova, found this letter. In this way, the tree became the first post office in South Africa and has been declared a national monument. Any mail you post in the boot-shaped letterbox under the tree will get the special post office tree frank. In the letter that De Nova found under the tree, he read about troubles that Detida had experienced near Calcutta. As De Nova himself was on his way to India, he was so grateful for this timely warning that he erected a small stone chapel depicted in the stained glass window in the Maritime Museum. It was the first location of Christian worship in the southern point of Africa. This wooden cross stands where it is thought the chapel was built. The Shell Museum building, erected in 1902, was originally used as a store. 
Today it is the biggest shell museum in South Africa, boasting a magnificent collection of shells from all over the world. Treat yourself to an imaginative exhibition portraying the use of mollusks by man, including some awe-inspiring African masks. There are also a number of aquaria where you can watch live animals in their natural habitat. The museum grounds is the freshwater spring that Diaz named Ahuada de San Brush, or the watering place of St. Blaise. It was from this spring that water was obtained during many sea voyages, and it is still flowing today. A little further on, you will see the Monroe Hook cottages. Built in 1830 and restored in the 1980s, they are among the oldest buildings in Mossel Bay, with the front house being a national monument. Just adjacent to the museum complex is a natural garden that preserves the original vegetation of the Mossel Bay area. Milkwood is the most common tree species to be found here. Explore the garden and you will come across a replica of the Padral, or stone cross, that Vasco da Gama erected here in 1497. A little lower down, you will find Malay graves facing Mecca on a piece of Muslim burial ground. Keep strolling through this peaceful environment and take in the magnificent views of the bay and site where Diaz landed over 500 years ago.